work with uh, Pierre Colmes and um, the starting point for us were the uh, comparison theorems we used in, uh, in the joint work with uh, Gabriel Dospinescu and uh, we were, at that time the comparison theorem we were interested in, the main one, was between proetalco homology and some DRAM data and uh, on both sides you have things which are infinite dimensional of course so it's, it's complicated. And uh, the direction we went, we went from the DRAM data to proetalco homology. Okay, so today I want to uh, state perhaps some generalizations of, of that, but also I will be mostly interested in the other direction. That is, I would like to go from proetalco homology to the DRAM data. So DRAM cohomology, Hyodokato cohomology, but maybe also the filtered cohomology of the filtered complex. And uh, for that, you will see that the, the main, uh, the key technique is the, the theory, Fontaine's theory of almost CP representations. So that's why at the beginning I'm going to assume that we are uh, over a finite extension of QP. It's possible this can be done using the category of BC spaces, but it's easier to use the category actually of uh, almost. C, uh, C representations. So I start with something which everyone knows. So I'm going to, to recall the algebraic setup. So we have finite extension of QP. Fancy GK will be the Galois group. And C is the completion of the algebraic closure and there will be the unramified ring, so the um, fraction field of the width vectors of the residue field of, of uh, K. So we have integers in K and the residue field small k. Okay, so let's recall the first part. I'm going to recall the classical story. And uh, the reason for that is that you will see the similarity with the, with the rigid, rigid picture we have in mind. Uh, so here x over k is a now algebraic variety and we have the PST comparison theorem. So we have a natural BST linear Galois equivariant period isomorphism. So, um, my R is going to be a positive number. So we have PST period isomorphism between geometric et homology, QP coefficients, BST for QP, and the uh, Hyodokato data. So I will explain what this object here is, more or less. And this is defined uh, over the maximal unramified extension of, of F and it was BC, BST, and uh, everything here is going to have a Frobenius, a monodromy operator and GK action, and you are compatible with, with these structures. And then when you tensor, you extend the coefficients from BST to BDRAM, you get the DRAM comparison theorem. So we have same et al cohomology, now with B the RAM, and this is compatible with the filtrations uh, with the RAM cohomology and B the RAM. Okay, so this is the part which, no, no. <laughs> so this is the formulation, this is the formulation which is done by alterations, I will, ex yeah, okay. All right, 
So maybe I want to leave this. I uh, don't know how to structure my, how to explain to you. Okay, maybe I use this one. Okay, so let me explain this in fact, because the question was exactly, formulation I used here is the most general one and is due to Bailinson. So what is this object on the right? I will explain in this algebraic setup, it's easier. So we have Hyodokato fellow, Hyodokato cohomology. So how do we define this? Well, you look at X, X can be open, can be singular. Then Bailinson, so this, this, this definition is due to Bailinson. And now Bailinson shows using the Young's alterations that if you look at H topology, so H topology, recall, is the topology generated by proper morphisms and Zariski open sets, you find a, a smooth uh, uh, H, H map from a smooth algebraic variety. So it's defined over L such that over that L uh, you have a semi-stable model. So the semi-stable model over OL uh, is proper. So otherwise you are compactifying your open set here both vertically and horizontally with normal crossing divisors. No multiplicity, everything is very nice. And uh, Bailinson proves that this kind of pairs, semi-stable pairs form a basis for this H, H topology. And so everything you compute with there you can define in H, H topology. So everything basically reduces to, to good definitions on, on the semi-stable pairs. So that's the way you defined uh, Hyodokato cohomology. That is, you look at the special fiber. So the usual algebraic Hyodokato cohomology, so special fi crystalline cohomology of the logarithmic, everything has logarithmic structures of the logarithmic special fiber. Then you take this funny uh, deformation object here and uh, this should be over the corresponding uh, ramified field for, for L over FL. Sorry for the notation, this is a rational object. Um, okay, let me not define this. Let me just mention that uh, we have this Hyodokato cohomology here. So that's classical, classical one. It's a finite rank vector space over F, uh, FL plus we have Hyodokato isomorphism between this space over OFL0, extend coefficients from FL to K, and then you can recover the Deram cohomology of, uh, of U, I guess you can write this well, of XK as a logarithmic scheme. Okay, so this is the local picture, then an arithmetic one, then you pass to the geometric situation, so you go all the way up, plus you glue in this H uh, topology, so you form hypercoverings with this kind of models, and then you get this object here you are interested in, so you get Hyodokata cohomology of X K bar, plus Hyodokata isomorphism between this object, which is an object over F and R, and you extend to K bar, and you get the, the Ramco homology of uh, X K bar. So in general, you have here Frobenius, you have monodromy operators, you have also residual action of GK, and it comes from this field extensions L, which you did along the way, and uh, that's all I want to mention, I think. So this was done by, this kind of construction was done by Bellinson, and we have this comparison theorems. Okay, so now let me discuss functors back and forth from uh, et al. data and the DRAM data. So have functors both ways. 
So we have the Ram 2 et al. Okay, so the most familiar to everyone formulation is the following, that we can recover the talco homology from the DRAM data. So as a GK module, we have Hyodokato cohomology, we have BST, and phi equal one, n equals zero, and then we intersect with uh, field zero of H, the RAM, and B, the RAM. Okay, so this is functor one way, but let me write it in a different way. So I want to say that there exists by Cartesian diagram which just means a commutative diagram, which is a pullback and a push forward. So I'm going to have a diagram with uh, so square, and by Cartesian just concretely means that if I build a uh, short exact sequence with this object and the sum of these two objects and this object is going to be really a short exact sequence. It's equivalent. So this is very simple construction. So I'm just going to rewrite basically the above, so I have something, a diagram like that. H, so Hyodokato data, then F and R, B plus, so I'm going, I'm twisting here uh, by R, so I can put B plus here, I want to, that plus, then if I equal PR, N equals zero, and then downstairs we have the RAM data, so here we have from filtration R of the RAM cohomology twisted by B the RAM plus, and here is the Hyodokato map and the natural embedding into B the RAM. So I get the RAM cohomology X B the RAM plus. Okay. So I just wanted to reformulate the, the standard, uh, the round to et al direction. Okay, what about the other direction that functors from et al to et al to the DRAM data? Okay, so these are also well known, so let me write them in this form. So the, just the DRAM, not the Hyodokato, we are looking at a talco homology with QP coefficients. I take a home into bed RAM. Now I take G equivariant, GK equivariant homes, and here I get a DRAM cohomology in degree R dual as a filtered. So it's a filtered isomorphism, okay? And for PST, we get the same object here, the talco homology. Here I get BST. Uh, okay, maybe this is correct. And here I take not fixed points, but GK smooth vectors, so I take uh, homomorphisms which are fixed by an open open subgroup in GK. And then I should get an isomorphism between Hyodokato this and Hyodokato cohomology dual. And this is as a phi and GK module. Okay, so I think that's that's the good formulation of functors both ways. Okay, so now the question we are asking ourselves, how much of that passes to the rigid analytic setup? Now objects become infinite, and what can we say? So let me state a theorem which we are hoping to have. So second, second part. Uh, okay, second part, so if X is 
partially proper, smooth, rigid analytic space over K. Okay, so partially proper means that, uh, so we are over, over DVR. I think in this setup is the same as aiadic, as aiadic partially proper for the associated aiadic space, and that just means that it satisfies evaluative criterion of properness, basically. But, for example, the spaces, style spaces are examples of partially proper spaces, and the spaces uh, Gabriel was talking about were, were Stein spaces, the, the Dreamfeld upper half spaces. Of, of course, also proper spaces, in, so partially proper and quasi-compact are also in this, in this category. So the DRM, I put question mark here because this is really in progress. So we have that, again, there exists a bicartesian diagram. And could I use this diagram above? Yes, let's try to mo modify this. <laughs> so I'm going to cheat, it will save me some time. Okay, so what do you have to change here to get, to get what we want? So we change this to pro et al. I can't say anything about et al. I don't know at the, we don't know at the moment how to do anything for the et al. situation. Okay, and this, this, this stays nicely here. So here you want R gamma deram, and here you want HR of this. So the objects you get here, so for example, even if you work locally, I will, I will play with a local model, a toy model at the end. For overconvergent affinoid, you will get that this is this is going to be overconvergent Hyodokato, so it's going to be finite rank, finite, very nicely. This is going to be huge, and this is going to be something, for example, like uh, differential forms d equals zero, so close differential forms. So this is huge too. These two two guys here. Okay, so I have this diagram one way, and here from etal to the ram. Okay, so let's see what we can. Some completed everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> if I, I if I miss completion over tensor product, that's just everywhere is completed. <clears throat> yes. So here, this is going to be actually the semi the the, the PST part is going to be exactly. Ah, also here is C and here is C. All right. Right. So here is C. So we get Hyodokato cohomology we can recover as the smooth vectors. That's the same here. Pro et al. Yes, thanks. Pro et al. Okay, and I have to add here a line about filtration. Okay, so we don't quite know what to do with filtration yet. So filtration, what happens with filtration? So let me mention the following. That let's say you are in Stein, Stein case or, or affinoid, I mean, uh, overconvergent affinoid case, then this of course has some very naive filtration, trivial filtration. And you can show that uh, this, this, in this case, so for example, Stein, this is compatible with filtration. And uh, last week, Pierre was doing some computations on trying to recover maybe this. This part here, the uh, more sophisticated filtration, cohomology of filtration using the uh, Fontaine's almost CP representations, and it looks like one could one could actually could do that. So maybe, maybe, maybe we can recover the filtration. In the proper case, of course, you can also recover. This is filtered isomorphism. Okay, is that all I wanted to tell you about this? I, yeah, okay, I, I will discuss that. 
So <clears throat> that's right. So the question is about the Hyodokato. Okay, maybe before passing to that, let me make more remarks. The definition of Hyodokato is not a problem. The problem is how to connect this definition to comparison theorems, actually. It's the main, main difficulty. So contrary to what Gabriel was saying, there is not going to be a single symptomic homology in my talk. <laughs> I decided to, to, to hide it somewhere there for the moment. Okay, so I want to make some more remarks about where are we. So uh, we can't really claim this, this theorem as, as of yet in this generality, but I can state the following. So the commutative diagram, uh, did I call it? Okay, so call it star and double star. So, so this star exists exist as a commutative diagram for smooth dagger spaces. So recall these are just over uh, rigid analytic spaces, spaces where you over converge the, the uh, structure, uh, structure sheath. And so from that it follows, of course, that it exists, so again exists as a commutative diagram for uh, partially proper rigid spaces because these <coughs> two categories of partially proper rigid and partially proper dagger are equivalent. And now for the bicartesian property there, so it's true for Stein, so this is basically the same proof we were using in the, in the work with, with Gabriel, the same type of computation once you have the diagram. Then it's true for proper uh, varieties, and here computation uses almost C, uh, C representations. <laughs> and partially proper, there is some computation And one of us thinks it's, uh, it's sufficient for the argument that it works. So maybe. OK, so that's the, that's the situation. Hmm? Box is, no, box is uh, the, I denoted by box, sorry. This is my by Cartesian thing. Is it, is it what, what were you saying? Is it easier to show that there are some long exact sequence? Well, this is equivalent to the existence of a long exact sequence, but do you mean the type of exact sequence we're getting for Stein spaces? Or, because this is equivalent to, to exact sequence which has this in first term, some of this in the second, and that's what I mean. Yeah, and sure, no, but I mean, after all, I mean, it's like a one module, so, but it's natural to get it really comes from some triangle in some right category. Yes. And the triangles, they are already, or the question is whether... Yeah, that's right, there are two triangles, actually. Right? So we get a triangle for, for the top, and we get a triangle for the bottom. That's right. And we have more information at here, actually. So we are using that information to derive the bar by Cartesian property. Yeah, in fact, so, so what you have here in the, in the third term, you have some kind of a, a cohomology of a graded, graded fellow, right? The RAM, the RAM mod field, something. And that can be largely simplified. So this is what we were trying to use in computations. Right. This is also equivalent to this bicartesian diagram. Yeah. Describing the poetal cohomology of the global system of the vector bundle. Yeah, in fact, the relationship with curve we don't quite understand of the total picture. Maybe, maybe it would help us to, to prove it in the, prop, in the partially proper case, because at the moment. No, it's not a fine. Of course not. 
No, but still, maybe. It's a coherent, not a coherent, it's a non coherent. It's quasi coherent. Yeah, no, these, these two guys are big in general. Yeah, okay. So on this side. Yeah. I tried some other tricks to get it for pro, 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 uh, uh, partially, partially proper guys, but since we have it for Stein, you can think because partially proper is locally Stein, I mean, it's covered by Stein pieces, you can maybe. But this is not something which really is amenable to gluing, I mean, to local arguments of this type, so I don't know. Anyway, that's where we are here. At least we are hoping that the, the statement, the, the statement, the way it's stated, is correct. It seems, it seems to us that's what it should be. So I'm going to discuss the. I, we are in this in this talk. I want to focus not so much on this, uh, but on on this on this part because we found it a bit surprising when we when we figured this uh, this out, and it uses it's a, a little bit of advertisement for Fontaine's CP CP representations. Okay, so someone asked me about the Hyodokata fellow there. So this is uh, constructed. So as I said, we work mostly. Well, basically working for Dagger spaces, but let me just make a shorthand here. So the Hyodokato XC. So it's defined as in Bailinson. And the De Jong alterations are replaced with the alterations. Uh, alterations of Hart and Temkin, separate Temkin. Okay, so recall what they say. So uh, we are in smooth case. In fact, in, even in the context of the young alterations, I think Bud has a paper when he, when he also shows that you can only, you can replace H topology by, by a tal topology. So you have eta locally, you look at the, so this is smooth now. Then you can find a model. Now this is semi-stable, but just vertical. And you can look at what we call crystalline symptomic homology, so crystalline, crystalline hyodokato, which is just the special fiber over O. This is also over some extension of, finite extension of K. So you look F, L, zero. Now, this is not going to be very nice. This, this doesn't behave well at all. So you pass, because we are in partially proper cases, so you pass, pass to dagger spaces, so you overconverge everything. Still, this is important because, as I said, you, you, pass, you pass from the overconvergent to this kind of fellow, and then you pass to uh, use Fontaine messing maps to a talco homology, so you use these fellows along the way, but they don't behave well, so you use a Grosse Klone Hyodokato overconvergence, so you, now our U is weakly formal. Scheme, okay, and we take this Kyodo Kato of Grosse Klone. So this is now. Maybe I need to assume. So let's let's be, let's assume this is affinoid to be for everything to be. Work, let's work with affinoids. So this is now finite rank vector space over F F L. And it has a Hyodokato comparison map with the RAM. So this Hyodokato, I will skip the adoration here, and it's compatible with the RAM once you extend the scalars to, to K. And then you make it geometric, and then you, then you glue for a tal, a, tal, a tal topology. So this all looks very easy, but in fact it's not so easy because um, the problem is that functoriality 
of, of this kind of Hyodokata objects and Hyodokata isomorphism is something very tricky. But it can be done. Okay. So that's all I wanted to tell you about this, this general thing. Now, uh, now is the toy example, so that I will do some computations. I have one more, I think. Ah, okay. All right, so I want to focus on this example because that's, that's what we started with to convince ourselves that things make sense. So toy example. So maybe that's part three, it's a toy example. So this is local, but uh, many ingredients are already here. Okay, so what do I mean? So we take X, I take it semi-stable because that <coughs> throws away the residual action of G, which we don't want. Semi-stable over conversion affinoid, I mean affinoid with a semi-stable reduction, over conversion affin affinoid with a semi-stable reduction. Then we claim that there exists a exact sequence of continuous GP linear Galois representation. So this is the type of sequences we used in, in the work with Gabriel, so I won't, I won't derive it, I just want to mention it. It's more or less equivalent in this setup to, to existence of this diagram. Okay, so we have can you, can you guys see this board? Because I have a lot of shade. Yeah. Okay, so we have R minus one mod care D extended to C. So let's call these three stars. Okay, then I have proetal cohomology of XC, which is a dagger space. So, of course, what is proetalco homology of a dagger space, right? Okay, and then Hyodokato cohomology BST plus phi pier n equals zero. Okay, so here let's just take the most naive definition of proetalco homology. I don't know whether there is anyone who is trying to define proetalco homology of dagger spaces. But. <laughs> but we would uh, just take the most naive as a limit of, of co uh, at, at alcohomologies with rational coefficients of, uh, of affinoids uh, in, the, in, the dagger, in the dagger presentation of this. Okay, so this is twisted by R, so I want to untwist it by, so twist everything by minus R in this sequence. Okay, and now we claim we make is that we have these isomorphisms which I denoted by two stars, which are at the top. That I can re recover Hyodokato and, and uh, the Ramco homology. Okay, so what's the idea here? So there I, we gave you, uh, I gave you a, a, f a formula, right? We are going to take Holmes into BST and be the Ram. And this one is very big C, C space, and this one is some mixture. So uh, when you apply uh, these uh, homes into period rings, here we are going to use, so call, it, call this HK, so here we are going to use classical Pia de Kochderi to extract, to get out Hyodokato cohomology out of it. So this is pretty much a classical computation. And here, this one, so call it dr, this one will just disappear. This one gets killed in, uh, in, by this procedure there. So that's, that's the argument. And it's here that we are using, using the uh, CP almost 
see representations. Okay. So now let's apply this home. So I'm going to do the computations and tell you where the CP representations come into play. So let's, I will denote by home just home, equivariant homes or, or corresponding or home G K smooth. Okay, so, so now let's apply home into BST and home into BDRAM to this sequence, twisted sequence just above. So what do we get? We get home from the Hyodokato part to BST. Then we get a home from the proetal part into BST, and then we get a home from uh, the RAM part into BST. You don't know it's subjective, and then we get the same here with the RAM. So we get a the RAM, no, Hyodokato, <laughs> sorry, Hyodokato to be the RAM. Proetal be the RAM. And then we get home the RAM be the RAM. Okay. So we want to compute, we want to show that this, okay, so let, let me write what we want to show. Okay, so suffice is to show. So one, it is that home from the DRAM part to BST is the same as the home from the DRAM part to be the RAM. And that vanishes. So as I said, this is the C almost C representation argument. And then we have, call this I maybe, we have another one. So if M is a phi N module, now of slope, slopes smaller than R, Okay, so let me make a digression here. So for us, M is going to be our Hyodokato cohomology. Now, why, why does it have slope smaller than, than R? Uh, yeah, okay, so we assumed here we have a, we have a semi-stable reduction. You have a weight uh, spectral sequence for uh, for Hyodokato cohomology, so you are reduced to looking at, in fact, algebraic cohomology uh, of Hyodokato cohomology of the components. And uh, now this is proved by Chiarellotto and Lestum, I think that it has, it has slopes smaller than R, so there is a theory of weights here. Okay, now let's put the usual object here, which is M tensor BST plus, let's twist it by minus R, uh, put it in this way, and phi equal one, N equal zero. Okay, and we prove the following two facts, that home, so Galois home from that object to BST recovers the dual of M as a phi N module. Okay, and we recover also the the extension, uh, the dual of MK as a filtered
filter module. Maybe I skip the filter, I don't want to discuss this. This is, this doesn't make. Okay, no filter. Just K module. Okay, so we need to prove these facts and then then we will get that this, this part here disappear. So this part here is isomorphic to this, and this is computed by the second the, by the second part. Okay, so let me start the argument. We'll give you a sketch of the proof of, of these facts. So first of all, with not much work, you can prove that B implies implies A. So let's try to prove this this B computation here. So this is a, a kind of standard periodic Hodge theory computation. So I will just be brief. So we are starting with a, with a module, and we'll try to make it admissible. So we have a phi n module. So take an admissible filtration on MK. Such a filtration exists uh, with weights smaller than R. And then we take W to be M Pideram plus mod fill R. Okay, so this should give us a sequence. Hope I got all the twists right here. So we get the usual sequence defining the associated uh, Galois representation. So semi-stable. Galois representation. Okay, and dimension of V is dimension of original M. What else do we know if you t take, so this is a representation associated to, um, to M, and we also know that G equivariant homes from V to DST of equal M, sorry. <laughs> okay, DST of equal M, yes. And we get MK dual by taking this home. Okay, so now we get an exact sequence from this sequence here. We get an exact sequence of homes. So we have home of W, so the homes again are, uh, are equivariant, B the RAM. Then we get home X, STR, M, B the RAM. And then here we get a home uh, V, B the RAM. And we just said that this is isomorphic to M, K bar. But in fact, you can show that this isomorphism goes factors through here. So that this map is actually surjection. So we have a short exact sequence like that. Okay, so what do we want to show? We wanted uh, to show Okay, so now it suffices to show that this object here vanishes. So that this object on the left is zero. Then you will have that this is an isomorphism and this is our, the dual of our MK and this is what you wanted in part B. <laughs> so I just want to show that this is zero and Fontaine says oh, okay because he knows that it's true. Yes. Okay, so let's let's argue how why.
So I'm going to reduce to a statement, which is a classical statement, the theory of CP representations, almost CP representations. So we want, we want home, maybe I put back the GK here, be the RAM to be zero. Okay, but now we can write this as a limit uh, of home V uh, over M T minus M B the RAM plus. Okay, so it suffices to show now the following statement that for every M and all N large enough, I call this statement one, big one. We have to prove that home Galois equivariant W T minus M B the RAM plus mod TN is trivial. So we reduce to this statement. So that's part B. Okay. Now, uh, now about uh, about one number one over there. So that's very short. Okay. We get maybe those guys. Okay, so let me just use this maybe so that's a very simple very simple here for part for part one. So by continuity it suffices to show that home GK of from C minus R to BD, BD, uh, BDR is zero. Okay, let's put R at least one. Yes, because the, 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 the round part here is a C vector space, but the action action uh, is, just, is just by a cyclotomic character. So again, we have that it's enough to show that home from C minus R T minus M, so by similar argument, Tn is zero. And again, for all M, uh, say bigger than R, and N large enough. Okay. Now let me rewrite this. So this is home. Galois equivariant from C, so I'm going to transfer the, the tail twist to the other side. B the RAM plus mod TN. And this is trivially the same as B the RAM plus mod T and the same fellow here. And this we want to be zero. Okay, so this is our second statement these two statements. Now, people familiar with the CP, almost CP vector spaces would know that this is a typical computation <laughs> using this category, but uh, for those of you who don't know them, I want to make a small, small uh, survey of CP, almost CP vector spaces now. I have, I have plenty of time, actually. When did I start? 20 after, or? You have 12 minutes. 12, 12 minutes? Okay, that's not so much. <laughs> okay. But I have two statements, all right? So I want to tell you, show you the main theorems, very nice theorems. It's a very rigid category. So perhaps it's possible to relax this condition that K is, a, K is an extension of QP by using BC spaces, but I don't think we know how to do this at the moment.
Okay, so uh, I'll just survey briefly. So these two points are proved using Fontaine's theory of almost C representations. So by representations, we mean representation of the Galois group. So this category that's denoted by C of GK. So what are the objects here? So we have objects are um, QP, Q, and Galois representations on QP Banach spaces. And they are almost isomorphic, almost isomorphic to CD for some D. Okay, so recall what the almost isomorphism means. So recall that two objects like that, W1 and W2, are almost isomorphic. If they differ basically by QP, QP representations, that is, there exists a V1 inside W1 and V2 inside W2. So these are finite rank over QP, and they have compatible with these embeddings Galois actions. And we have an isomorphism between W1, V1, and W2, V2. OK, so this is familiar construction, perhaps. So if W belongs to this category, and it's uh, almost isomorphic to CD, then we call dimension of W uh, D and height. So if you have an isomorphism to CD using uh, V1 and V2, then the height of, of W is, by definition, a dimension, QP dimension of uh, V2 minus QP dimension of V1. So this is also familiar construction, I suppose. OK, so let's list facts from this theory. So first, this category is abelian. OK, now it contains, this is what we will use. It contains all finite length Bideram Bide plus representations. So it contains Bideram plus representations. So I mean representations of finite length, Galois representations. OK, and some couple more facts, maybe. Uh, so W is almost isomorphic. So W is almost isomorphic to CD, yeah. and is isomorphic. And these are the spaces corresponding to this almost isomorphism. Yes. Okay. And I wanted to give you an example here because okay, so we have this. What do you mean by fiber functor? I will, I will, I will get to that. No, no, it's very no. It's more, it's more or less what? Yeah, but I'm going to list this this fact because we also we use it. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, so, so an interesting example here is that C and C1, so twist by one, are almost isomorphic. OK, and why is that? So one, one way of looking at this, we have the following fact that uh, if W is length D, object 
in VDRAM plus representations, then in fact W is almost isomorphic to CD and height, so it has dimension D and its height uh, is zero. Okay. So these are some <coughs> basic facts. And now we have computations of home and X that we, that we crucially use. So in what I showed you, we, we, I just use homes really, but in, in the computations for filtrations, we also have to use Euler characteristic and X. So let me just mention this theorem of Fontaine. So first, X I in this category are finite rank over QP and zero for I at least three. Then we have Euler characteristic. So we have sum from I from zero to two of X groups. And we get minus extension, degree of the extension, height X, height Y. And there is also duality. So there exists a duality. So perfect pairing between X I in this category. So I will skip the subscripts and X to minus I. And it goes into X two of X and X twisted. And there is a trace map to QP. Okay, it's one set of facts. And another is the one that Fontaine was just mentioning that we use. That is, in the sequences we were working with, all I had were sometimes very large uh, Galois representations on some continuous on some topological vector spaces over Q. So how do we get to this category of almost almost representations. Okay, so let me mention another theorem of Fontaine. Okay, so one, if W is a Biderum plus representation, again, of finite length, then we have, we can consider Biderum plus uh, X homomorphisms between C and W, but you can also forget the Biderum, let's first forget the Biderum plus structure and just look at uh, Galois, so this is also Galois, the Galois homomorphism on QP topological vector spaces of this type, and now this is an isomorphism, so this functor is fully faithful, then, then we also can pass not losing anything to the category of almost CP vector spaces. So we are here, where you can compute easily. And I will finish maybe uh, so with this key, key theorem where that proves one and two, which is the following. So we are looking at home in this category of almost almost objects between Biderum plus mod Ti on one hand, and then you put something in negative degree here, and then Biderum plus, and then you just make sure that this degree here j is larger than your degree i there, and this turns out to be zero. Okay, and if you have that, then this points one and two follow easy. From, from that. Okay, it's hot here. <laughs> Thank you.